Hi, I'm Dr. Steve George, Landscape Horticulture Specialist with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I'm so glad that you could join us today. Uh, many, many homeowners are faced with landscape plants that suffered severe freeze damage this past February. And to achieve overall success in dealing with this difficult situation, homeowners need to approach it from three perspectives. Landscape performance, problem diagnosis, and then enhancing plant recovery. So from the landscape performance perspective, when you look at a damaged plant, you need to ask, is that plant even worth saving? Uh, certainly with shrubs, uh, will it regain an attractive growth habit in a reasonable length of time, such as two months? If not, the plant should probably be removed and, and replaced. As an example, here you have two dwarf shrubs. In this one, just the about the up, upper 30% is damaged. Uh, the rest of the stem and, and leaves are healthy. So yeah, you can, you can prune that out and, and eventually shape that back in the, the way you want it. However, I, I see a lot of dwarf Indian hawthorn in this area and 99% uh, of them are dead and they just have a fringe of a few green leaves there. I, I would take that shrub out and replace it. All right, on, on large or important trees, I would certainly get the help of a, of a certified arborist because um, that's, uh, that's very important to get those trees in good shape. In a situation like this, uh, a lot of people want to rush out and, and do something right now, but uh, we need to be patient to give the plants a chance to recover and to give the soil a chance to warm up, which is very beneficial to plant growth. I would wait till mid-June mid-June before you make a keep it or remove it decision on each particular plant. So when you're evaluating damaged plants, you, you scrape, scratch under the bark and check for moist green tissue, which indicates that particular portion of the, of the branch or trunk is still alive. If when you scratch under the bark, it is dry and a tan to brown in color, that portion is dead and needs to be removed all the way back to sound living tissue. Then once you remove the, the dead tissue, then you, you shape the plant with careful pruning. In terms of uh, problem diagnosis, we want to utilize the principles of plant physiology, which is a science that I love, and it's a science of how plants function, and that will help us to determine which part of the plants have been damaged. For example, we, I see a lot of Burford holly here in North Texas that are showing symptoms of general yellowing of the foliage and intervenal chlorosis, and the, the, the foliage is sparse. That's that's not typically what we see because this type of holly does very well in, the, in our alkaline clay soil. So uh, it's certainly not a pH problem. So what are the likely causes of these symptoms? One, it's either damage to the roots or two, damage to the vascular tissue in the plant stems or trunk. So after checking the bark at several spots on multiple plants, I saw no damage to the vascular tissue. And since all the leaves were, were affected almost the same, and there was no marginal leaf burning or, or death of the leaf tissue, I concluded that it was the root system uh, that was damaged by these low temperatures, and that was compounded by our, our wet, cool soils we've had. So that plant and a lot of these damaged plants, they're in shock. They're in shock. So how do we help those plants to recover and resume strong, active growth? Our guiding principles need to be clearly defined and based on university science. And also the, the practices we employ to help these plants, we should follow the earth kind landscape management system. Please keep in mind that when humans are in shock and they're in, in intensive care, they don't eat or drink much and plants are the very same way. So here's the best way you can help those, those plants that have been shocked. First of all, I would not, not fertilize Without an active functioning root system, applying fertilizer does little to no good, and if it's overdone, it can actually hurt the plant. You certainly do not want to overwater. That is a real danger, especially in a heavy clay soil. So you want to run the plants on the dry side. How do you know when to water? Move the mulch back, stick your finger uh, in the soil in the root zone. When that soil is dry, an inch down, you water. Until it gets dry again, an inch down, you, you do not water. So what I would do, I would scrape off the existing mulch. I would apply two inches of a, of a fully finished plant-derived compost 
and over that then I would add two inches of a really good mulch and I think our best mulch is shredded hardwood mulch. So two inches of really good compost, two inches of really good mulch. This is what's really going to help that, that plant. The compost will slowly decompose and that will gradually feed the plant and the beneficial soil microorganisms. This new the mulch is going to be protecting the roots and it too will gradually decompose to further enrich the soil. So here's how you help your plants. Give, give them the good compost and mulch and give them time and uh, hopefully a, a lot of them will uh, come out of it. So these practices I've, I've outlined for you, that's going to give your freeze damaged plants their best chance to survive and flourish. So certainly thank you for joining us today. I've, I really enjoyed bringing you this information. I hope that this help proves helpful to you. A couple of program notes. Uh, please join us tomorrow for a brief introductory video and then again on Friday for a full-length video featuring the very impressive Earthkind flower trials at beautiful Myers Park. This is going to be a very special and enjoyable video.